Okay, welcome back to Simulink Tutorials. This one um, is going to show you how to uh, use variables in MATLAB. So let's bring up Simulink and we'll create a new model. Right, so we've got a new model there. And let's just do our usual stuff. Let's put a um, oh, let's put a unit step into here. And then a continuous one, we'll put a transfer function. And then a sync, we'll do a scope. All right. So let's go to our model here and kind of set these guys up. Now one way to connect things is I can left click on that step. I can hold down control and then left click on the transfer function and it connects. Select the transfer function, hold down control, click on the scope and it connects. All right. So let's run that and open the scope. Okay, and there we go. We've got uh, kind of the unit step response of a low pass filter. Let's put our um, our mux in there. I always like having that mux. It allows me to have multiple variables. So I can uh, connect that to my scope. And then we'll have the output of our filter and then we'll have our um, our, our original step function going in there. All right, let's run that. Okay, so there you go. Yeah, so there's a, you know, you're applying a step at time t equal to 1 and then you've got your unit step response. Basically the capacitor's charging. But a lot of times you kind of like to know what variables you're dealing with in this transfer function. So let's double click that transfer function and let's set the numerator coefficient to be 1 divided by r times c. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll set the denominator equal to 1 divided by r times c. Okay. And we'll save that. And now you kind of have something that you know looks like what we're talking about in class. This guy here is a well, it's a RC low pass filter. All right. And let's see now if we run it here. Oh, we've got some errors. Well, we don't never tell it. We didn't tell it what R and C are. Well, the way you tell it what R and C are is you go into MATLAB and you can set up R equal to 1 and C equal to 1. All right. Then come back in here to um, get all your other stuff back up there. So at this point here, you know, we've got, um, let's bring my scope back up here. Now R and C are equal to 1, and if I run it again, there you go. It's reading the variables in from MATLAB. Okay. So now we could do something similar. Let's copy this guy, and what we can do is paste. Okay, And let's kind of move these guys up a little bit. Okay, put our scope up there, this up here. Now I want to have a, add another input on my mux, so let's add that, uh, make that 3. And we can make the mux a little bit bigger there. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there's my low pass filter. Now I want to connect another filter to that guy, so let's run that into there. And then let's see, let's connect these two guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do is connect, um, yeah, there you go. So now I've got that step going into both of them, but let's in, let's change this guy. Let's let this guy be omega sub n, and we'll call it squared. I'm not sure if I can use that. Well, we'll find out in a little bit. And then for this coefficient here, we will have r over l, and the next coefficient will have what? 1 over um, l times c. Is that what that guy is? Yeah, and actually up here it was um, 1 divided by L times C. Yeah, there you go. So now what you've got is the tri uh, typical um, yeah, an RLC circuit where we're tapping off the, uh, the capacitor. 1 over LC up top, S squared plus R over LS plus 1 over LC. Now we don't have an L, so we got to go back in here and we have to define an L. We'll set that equal to... Uh, one and then of course up here in your workspace you've got c equal to one l and r equal to one okay. so let's uh bring back up all the pieces of the puzzle here and let's see At this point let's go ahead and run it and see what happens yeah so there you go the yellow is the unit step all right so we can kind of double click you can actually double click this connection and label it yellow i can double click this connection and uh give it a label of what's that purple and we can double click this guy down here and that would be uh, what's that like a blue or something 
There you go. So that way you can kind of remember. But if you look over here, you applied the unit stem, and the low-pass filter kind of showed that capacitor charging up. But the second-order low-pass filter basically did the same thing. We just had a little overshoot due to the second order, but essentially that capacitor charged up, and you passed the DC to the output. All right, so there's uh, the two filters in terms of R, L, and C. Well, let's play one more. Let's do one more thing. Let's copy this guy, and what we'll do is we'll paste it. Because in controls, we typically like to talk about, um, you know, zeta and omega in. So let's write that guy in terms of zeta and omega in. All right, so let's uh, open up this one, and we'll set uh, four inputs there. And I'll run my additional filter to the fourth input, and then I'll connect that in here. And then let's open this guy, and let's just write this as... Uh, omega sub n. I wonder if I can use that carrot. I don't know if I can use that carrot. We'll try that. And then down here, let's see, what were the coefficients of my s term? It was like um, 2 times zeta times omega n, right? 2 zeta omega n. And then over here, you had what? Omega n. Um, actually, let's just do this. Omega n squared. And then up here, what I'll do is I will say omega n squared. All right? Yeah, so I've got omega sub n squared, and then I've got s squared plus 2 zeta omega n. Actually, we could spell this guy out, call it zeta. Okay. And, um, yeah, let's save that. And I'll need to uh, make this a little bit bigger to read all those. But, yeah, there's the transfer function we have in class. Omega sub n squared, s squared plus 2 zeta omega sub n, s plus omega sub n squared. But, of course, I have to go to MATLAB now and... Um, set up my omega sub n. Well, let's set that equal to 1, and then let's come down to here and say, let's set zeta equal to 1, all right? And come back down to here and run this guy. And let's see what happens. And that would be the red one, all right? So let's put red here. Now, what's the difference? Actually, I think the difference is 1, 1. Yeah, I actually have a 2 down here. The only difference between the RC low-pass filter and the RC low-pass filter 2, the um, zeta, is my coefficient on S is 2. I just increased it. And if you notice what happened from the blue to the green by increasing that coefficient on S, we got rid of our overshoot. But I think if you get that overshoot back, what you can do is uh, decrease zeta. So let's try that. Let's go back to this guy right here. And what we'll do is we'll change a value of zeta. Let's make it equal to uh, 0 0.5. Okay? and then bring our models back up. So now zeta, well actually that's going to give me the same thing, isn't it? Because, yeah, that should give me the same thing as the previous case. And it does. So now the um, red and the blue are overlapping because RLC are 1, 2 zeta omega sub n are 1. All right, let's go back and make zeta even smaller. Let's set zeta equal to uh, 0 0.1 here and see what the effect of that is. Okay, so now I'm going to have 2 times 0 0.1 omega n, so 0 0.2 down here as opposed to 1 up here. Yeah, so as we start decreasing zeta, we get that oscillation. Now it's eventually going to end up steady state to uh, 1, but it's oscillating and it's taking its uh, sweet time about getting it. And the, notice the overshoot's getting really big. Let's go ahead and decrease it a little bit more and, and see what happens. It was at 0 0.1. Yeah, we'll make it a... Uh, zeta equal to 0 0.5, or actually 0 0.05. We'll kind of split it in half there. And now when I run this, what does that third one do? Yeah, it's just even more overshoot. Yeah, zeta gets smaller, you get more and more overshoot. Okay, now what about zeta equal to 0? That'd be interesting. Yeah, see, notice how this sine wave, it, it is decaying. Because the peak up here is about, uh, what, 1.8. The peak right here is just a little over 1.5. Let's set that zeta equal to 0 and see what the effect of that is. Okay. And let's run over here. Set zeta equal to 0. So now at this point, I don't have any s term. I have s squared plus omega sub n squared. Well, the poles of that are going to be s plus and minus j omega sub n. So they're going to be on the imaginary axis. Well, let's run that and see what happens. Now, if you look at this, um, yeah, look what's happening. It's not getting attenuated. And if we increase our time base, let's increase our time base maybe to go to 20 here. I'll change that to 20 seconds and run it again. 
Well, what you've got is an unstable system down here. You applied a DC input to a system with this transfer function. Uh, zeta was zero. Zeta is damping. There's no damping, and you have oscillation. Now, that may be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're designing a um, um, an oscillator that runs on DC, then it's a good thing. If you're trying to control a motor, it's probably not a good thing. All right? Okay. I think that's probably enough for today. Thanks for listening.